Hey, welcome to Amplify Thermal Energy Lesson 3.4, recommending a heating system. We finally are going to be telling Principal Chang which heating system we think is the best. And based on what we have seen uh, so far in these lessons and in this simulation and through our demonstrations, it definitely looks like the groundwater heating system is going to work best for the school. All right. Let's go ahead and take a look at the warm-up. Uh, the warm-up is a little bit of review of finding averages and total thermal energy. It says calculating total and average kinetic energy, review the system shown and answer the questions below. So these objects have just been pushed together. We have sample A and sample B. Remember the circles in everything that we've done so far, the circles are always representing the molecules. The numbers are representing the kinetic energy of each of the molecules. So in sample A, we have all these various numbers from one through three. Sample B, we all have all fives. It looks like we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight molecules in sample A and four molecules in sample B for a total of 12 molecules. All right, so let's take a look down here. What is the total kinetic energy of the molecules in the system, sample A plus sample B, at the moment shown in the diagram above? Well, let's count them up. How do we find the total energy? Um, we have to add up just all of these numbers. That's all we're doing. We're adding up all the numbers. So let's see, we have 5, 10, uh, 13, 16 plus 20 is 36, right? We have a total of 36 right now. That's our thermal energy of our system. What will the total kinetic energy of the molecules in the system be when the system reaches equilibrium? 36, right? The total amount of energy that you have is not going to change. We're assuming that this system is, you know, isolated. Uh, so from the beginning to the end, we're going to have the same total kinetic energy or thermal energy. We're going to say 36 right there. <clears throat> ah, but this, what will the average kinetic energy of the molecules in the system be when it reaches equilibrium? Ah, shoot, averages. How do I find averages again? You're going to have to do it later on, so make sure you know how to do this. Make sure you practice this. This is a good time to do that. All right, how do I find average? Well, the first thing that I have to do is add up all of my numbers. I already did that, didn't I? I have 36. Okay, the next thing I have to do to find the average is divide. What do I divide by? Oh, yeah, the total number of molecules that I have. I added 12 numbers together. So I need to divide by 12. Well, what's 36 divided by 12? You guessed it, three. So the average kinetic energy of the molecules in the system when it reaches equilibrium is going to be three. Don't believe me? Uh, try it in the sim. You, the sim doesn't look anything like this. You won't be able to do it. But anyways, uh, make sure you practice finding averages because uh, that's something you're gonna be doing a lot. You might end up doing that, you know, your whole life. Let's take a look at number two, modeling tool, modeling differences in temperature change. Now, I have attached the modeling tool to your lesson so that you can uh, edit it. You can make yourself a copy, uh, put it in Google Drawings, and go ahead and edit away. Uh, or you could print it, and you could write on it. It is up to you. Um, you can also try to find some other way. You can do an interpretive dance uh, to show your modeling. I don't know. Uh, here's, here's what you got to do. Modeling objects of different sizes. Now, there's actually two modeling tools that we're going to be doing here. Use the modeling tool, differences in temperature change sheet, to help you show the equilibrium temperatures of different systems. Here's our goal. Create models that show how the number of molecules in the objects of the system affects changes in temperature. Oof, that sounds... That sounds uh, uh, intimidating. Well, don't worry. Most of it's like laid out for you. Really, you're just kind of plugging in some numbers and showing what's going on. Yes, you will have to you know, think about it, obviously, a little bit. But uh, let's see what we're supposed to actually do right here. In modeling differences in temperature change part one, model how sample A and sample B will change temperature over time. Okay, let's take a look at that modeling tool. Oof, here it is. There's a lot of stuff there. Look at that. All right, complete the model tool below to show how sample A and sample B will change over time. Okay, you know what? Now that I've looked at this for a second, this looks kind of familiar. I think I can figure out what's going on. The circles are always representing molecules, right? The numbers are always representing the speed of the molecules or the energy of the molecules. 
okay, I've got an empty box here. Here's what I need to put in this box. I need to show which direction, if any, energy is transferring. Is energy going to transfer from A to B, from B to A, or not at all? Um, it already shows me that uh, sample B has much higher temperature than sample A. Hey, I could have figured that out anyway, right? I could find the average uh, speed of all of these molecules, and I, could, I would see that, oh yeah, the average for A is a lot higher than the average for B. Okay, so this is when basically these things are first pushed together. Now, over time, this is what we're assuming we've reached equilibrium by the time we get to uh, time two. So sample A and sample B, you're going to have to figure out what is going to be the speed of all these molecules. Now, every single one of these circles needs to have the same number. Wait a minute. Why does it have to have the same number? Oh, yeah, because equilibrium means that it is stable. And it's not stable until everything has reached the same temperature. Every single molecule has the same uh, speed. Okay, uh, The temperature gauges should be exactly the same. And what do you think is going to go here? I'll go ahead and give you a hint. It's going to be the X. The X is going to go in this box because there is no more energy transfer once we have reached equilibrium. What number goes in all of these circles? You're going to have to find the average, okay? You're going to have to add up all of these numbers, and you're going to have to divide that number by how many uh, molecules you actually added together. That's the number that's going to go in all these circles. Giving it away for you, I know. Uh, the next thing that you're going to do is part two, okay? Now, part two, it looks the same, except this sample below all of a sudden has a bunch more molecules. So sample D versus sample B has, what, three times as many molecules? So essentially, you're doing the same exact thing, though. You're going to show which direction energy is transferring in this box. And then over here at time two, you're going to put the same... It, it should be the same exact number in every single one of these circles. Uh, you should have an X here, and whatever temperature you decide uh, for these temperature gauges, it should be exactly the same. Um, <clears throat> how do I figure out which number? You're going to find the average of all of these molecules. Add them all together, divide it by the total number of molecules, and that is the number that you're putting in to every single one of those circles. Okay? So, take some time. Fill that out, complete that, and come on back to me. Next, we're in part two of tab two, uh, and we have a couple questions to answer. The first one is, how is the model you made in part one different from the model you made in part two? And again, if we look at our models, uh, the model in part one, it had much fewer molecules than the model in part two. You could discuss how it has fewer molecules. You could also say something about how it had a lower thermal energy. Um, in fact, a, a really good answer would say something about both, that it had fewer molecules, it had lower thermal energy. Um, and then what about with part two, or, uh, time number two um, in our models? How would that be different? Well, in part two, the average speed of all of the molecules is going to be higher than the average speed of the molecules in part one. Why is that? Because we started with a higher thermal energy. We had a higher thermal energy to begin with. We had more energy to spread around over uh, all of the molecules, whereas in part, uh, part one, we had a lower thermal energy to start with, so it just didn't warm uh, the samples as much. Okay, That's essentially what's going on there. Now, how can you use your model to explain why the groundwater system is the better choice? Ugh, geez. Well, uh, is this model, the modeling tool that we just did, is that different than the water heater system and the groundwater system? Yes, it is, in a couple of ways. Um, first off, in the modeling tool, uh, we see that the second sample, sample B, um, it's the same temperature as sample D. Now, in the water heater system, uh, the water heater uh, heats the water up to a higher temperature than the groundwater would be. So maybe this, if this were actually trying to represent the water heater system and the groundwater system, we might say that, sure, we can leave these as five. But I don't know, maybe put these as four. I don't know how that would change the average temperatures in the end, um, but 
it is a little bit different, isn't it? Uh, there are some things that we're really not taking into account. But you could still answer this. How could you use the model, though, to show that the groundwater system is a better choice? Again, you're talking about having a higher thermal energy to begin with. Um, and if you have more energy to begin with, then you're going to be able to spread out that energy uh, even more so that you end up with a higher average kinetic energy of all of the molecules. Um, <clears throat> let's move on to part three. Go ahead and take some time to write in your answers for those. Uh, and let's move to part three, reasoning about the groundwater system. Oh boy, we get to use the reasoning tool again. I like the reasoning tool. I think it's a great, great tool for us to use. Um, let's take a look at the directions here. Making reasoning clearer. With your partner, choose two pieces of evidence listed in the first column of the reasoning tool uh, and use the middle column to connect them to the groundwater claim. Now, what evidence are they talking about? I've attached to this to your lesson. Uh, we have three pieces of evidence on these cards. Um, one of them is an excerpt from the Thermal Energy is Not Temperature article. Remember the one about the soup? Uh, the other one is from the Energy Cube model that we did in class. Um, the results of the Energy Cube model in the filled out data table. And the next piece of evidence is the demo that we did in our last lesson, where we put the hot water into the containers of the cold water um, and collected that data. So, Here's what we need to do. Again, it says choose two pieces of evidence listed in the first column uh, and use the middle column to write how it supports this claim. The claim that we are going with is that the groundwater system will warm the air in the school more. Okay, so choose two pieces of evidence and write down your reasoning. Why does it matter? Uh, the evidence, the thermal energy sim. How is what we did in the simulation connected to this claim at all? How is this uh, excerpt from the article? How is that connected to the claim that the groundwater system will warm the air more in the school? Um, <clears throat> again, reasoning, reasoning, reasoning. This is often the hardest thing for us to do is actually connect the evidence to the reasoning. Um, but give it a shot. Uh, looking forward to seeing what you come up with. And that is actually going to lead us right into our homework. Let's go there. Uh, we are writing out our final argument to the principal, writing a letter to Principal Chang, uh, letting him know, hey, which system we think is best. We've said it's the groundwater system. Uh, we're, we're clear on that. We've decided that. It says, use the evidence you recorded in the reasoning tool in the previous activity to help you write a message to Mr. Chang recommending the groundwater heating system. You may wish to use some of the vocab, not may, you want to use some of the vocabulary words listed in the word bank and the scientific argumentation sentence starters below to help you write. Uh, so you're taking what you just did in the reasoning tool and you're just really putting it into paragraph form. That's it. You don't need to come up with anything necessarily new. You're just taking the work you already did and you're just making it look nicer. Uh, really, you're putting it into a different package. So here's our word bank. The more of these words you know, that you use, correctly, uh, the better your argument is going to sound because uh, this shows that you know more about what you're talking about. These scientific argumentation sentence starters, these are great to use if you're getting kind of stuck, if you just don't know how to start your next sentence or maybe even how to start the whole thing. Um, but here's where you're going to write your explanation. Write a message to Mr. Chang explaining why the groundwater heating system will warm the school more than the water heater system. Use evidence to support your claim for each piece of evidence you use. Explain how the evidence supports your claim. That's the reasoning piece. So go ahead and write your letter to Mr. Chang right there. And then the last thing for homework is the self-assessment. Mr. Wiggin, it says optional, so nope, do it. Do it. This is not going to be one of those optional ones. Every once in a while, I say you don't have to do it, but this one I definitely want you to do. Uh, check your understanding. Go through each of these statements uh, saying whether or not you understand and then explain your answer choice. If you put yes, I still w I want an explanation. Uh, 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 describe it for me. If you say not yet, well, tell me anything you know, or if there's a specific question that you have about that statement. Uh, don't just leave it blank. Uh, I want an explanation for each one of these. Um, and the, 
Why? Because I want to put it up on my wall somewhere so I have copies of your work. No, this is to help you think about what you know so far and think about your understanding and evaluate yourself. It's very important. So that's it. Once you complete your self-assessment, you are done. And we will see you next time.